Analyzing championship winning robots is important, but some of the most valuable design lessons come from seeing how teams solve problems with real world constraints. Like this yeah. East turn. Oh, okay. Even though like it looks wobbly, yep. it's really like. A yeah, one there's moment. this nice kind of little fold right in there, and yeah. that, that's enough and, just to hold. Cool. Yeah. Learning to look at any design, understanding its trade offs, and apply those lessons to your own builds is what separates good teams from great teams. And this video is exactly about that. Seeing clever engineering in action so you can improve your own approach to design challenges in future seasons. I'm Coach Pratt, and as a coach of national champion FTC teams with over a decade in robotics education experience, I know the best learning happens when you look beyond only world championship robots and instead examine robots that perform well but may not be the absolute top in the world. In this episode of Robots Revealed, I'm going to run you through my interview with Team 27624, Tech for Peace Jr. from Turkaya. We'll break down their game strategy for Into the Deep, we'll look at their unique double-sided intake, and we'll also get into some specifics of their large coaxial virtual 4-bar lift, built with some carbon fiber tubing, and a lot of custom 3D printed parts. We'll also talk about how these choices impact both performance and their budget. Okay, so tell me about your, or your, your general strategy for the robot. What did, what did you choose? So our general strategy for this robot was to play about samples, about the little delay, about cycling between the middle and the top baskets. Mm -hmm. So we made an intake especially made for that. Yep. And we, did, we chose this tactic because last time we had two robots. This is actually our third robot. Okay. And in the other two generations, the robot used to go for specimens. And we just saw that even though there is a two-point uh, change between the strategies, this is much better of a strategy because even though it gives us less points, we have much more time to cycle between them. Mm -hmm. So we get most of the points out of this strategy. Okay. So talking about your intake, I'm so, curious how that actually grabs a sample and okay. hangs onto it. As you can see here, our intake is made from a flexible material. It's made from a surgery too. Yep. And the specialty of this is, can I get a specimen? Is that like, when it gets a specimen, this holds it really good. And because of the spacing that we have between the sticks, even though these weren't, these aren't here, yep. it will still catch the specimen. Yeah, these can you show me that? I'm curious how it actually but, sits. Like this, yep. these turn. Oh, okay. Even though like it looks wobbly, yep. it's really like a yeah. One there's moment. this nice kind of little fold right in there, and that, yeah. that's enough. Just old, cool. Yeah, super cool. Do you use a color sensor so you uh, know when it's in so there? So actually, our first design was to put a color sensor right here. Yep. So our strategy was that we intake. Yep. And when the color isn't right, then just fuse it out the back. Yeah. And we can like continue doing that. And did that but work now, or no? The advantage of this yep. is that I can also intake from behind so let's say the arms down uh, yep. and instead of intaking like this if yep. a piece is here I can yep. also intake it from here so that's much easier for us yep and is it just like you look at the piece and you say okay I'm in the middle it's time for me to stop actually yeah I do that even though it's, it doesn't seem like a good tactic it's much easier for us to make it and also I feel like it's easier to control because like even though technology is going really fast and yep. stuff but, like, still, it's a good thing to have, like, some control over it. Nothing wrong some manual stuff. Okay. And how do you find that this, when it goes to the outtake, how is your, you've got quite a few belts here working yeah. on, on quite a large pivoting system. Tell yes. me about your pivoting arm, why you went with such long belts, so, and can you maybe show me it, it tilting up and over as well? So, about the length of the, of the belts, yep. it wasn't actually optional to make the... <laughs> arm long yep. and to actually connect the belts we had yep. to make long belts we actually yep. made uh, custom belt tensioners yeah that uh vex yeah. mm -hmm. uh, yeah, little zap straps zip yeah, ties it. cable yeah. ties it holds yeah. it uh -huh. in really good yeah zip ties just pulls it yeah and here if you ask what this mess is <laughs> uh you can see here we use two motors double four to one yep. gearboxes to control this small arm that you can mm -hmm. see, that's stretched from here to yep. up here, and this moves it on its own, and so this just moves up and down, and okay. the motors are moving. Yep. Also, we are using three five to ones. Yep. 
so five to one gearbox. Yep. Because these are for the big arm. Uh, mm-hmm. Because we are also climbing the first floor at mm-hmm. the end game. Okay, so just for my clarity, these two motors here. Yeah. Rotate out to this gear here, mm-hmm. which then goes to this one, which is attached to this axle. Yes, and the same here. These, yeah, so it's double up. You've got a little uh, encoder on this side that's like a little rev through bore. Yeah. yeah, we yeah. also have a through bore here. This goes up to here, and as uh-huh. this pivots here, that pivots your main outtake arm there. Yeah. Off these pulleys. Okay, so how do you make the whole thing flip over then? What's your system so for that? So our system is actually, when you already move this arm, yep. this still goes up. So okay. we actually used for coding, we used a PID system. So it's really easy for us to go here. Yep. But we can't go here because of the size limitations. Yep. We always play in front. And let me show you our positions in the PID. So you're using a coaxial virtual four bar for that then? Yeah. yeah okay. So in PID, and this is the other side of your coaxial. Now this spins this yes. side, which actually pivots the main arm yeah. around itself. Okay. And so actually yeah. our most of the... Most of our movement is between yep. here yep. and the top basket. Now that I'll show the position. So a robot starts like this. This is our starting position. Yep. When the match starts, we have a to- we have an autonomous that puts in two samples into the high basket. Mm-hmm. And also in teleop, we get to nine to 12 t- samples oh, into the solid. high basket. That's really solid. Thanks. Very solid. And so our tactic is just when this, we keep this here. So when we're moving around, it, mm-hmm. we don't hit something because we've already had like some problems with this. Yep. Because it's 3D printed, when we hit something, this breaks instantly. So we also have a bunch of reserves. Yeah, yes. So, I see that you have designed this in two separate parts. Yeah. So, that so you we can, can easily it, mount yeah. it off and on. And Great so thinking. we move around like this. Yep. So we don't uh, hit something on the floor. Yep. And when it's time to intake, we just bring it down and it sucks up really fast. And also if a sample is right here, because of the flexible material that we yeah. use, it's uh, it likes to it grab it a little bit. It. Yeah, it catches it and just turns it around and takes it in. So, and tell me about your hang now. So, What's about your hang, our hang is actually made out of two 3D printed hooks. Yep. And these hooks were actually, first of all, designed by by a, like flexi, no, no, plexiglass. Yeah. But then it didn't perform good, so we changed to this idea. We mounted them on the carbon fiber pipes because it was like the most available place to mount yep. them. So tell me about how that hang actually works then. Do you pivot that whole arm back? Yeah, I And then you just grab yeah. onto it there? I pivot this to yep. the back like uh-huh. this. Yep. Then I just ram the robot to the first pipe yep. and I just bring this down and it makes us hang. You bring this down? Yeah, and then Not hangs. backwards? No, no. no. Uh, and okay. this makes us hang in five minutes. No, five seconds. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, five minutes doesn't sound right. Cool. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. How have you uh, managing belt tension this season? Because you've got yeah. you've got a lot of custom tensions on mm-hmm. here. Have you found that you've been skipping any teeth yeah. with these? So or slipping with teeth? these tensioners, no, never. Only when I moved arm, it's sometimes, but that's normal. But it never actually skipped while we were like trying it. Yep. Only... We made these mm-hmm. because if we were going to hang just not using these just with the robot's normal yep. natural system, yep. then we would be too short and we would still be touching the bottom. And if we put these two upwards, then the, ro- the motors and the, obviously the belt's tension yep. wouldn't be enough to lift it up. So we had to limit this here. That's why we made a, actually a hook. Yep. And that's it. Okay. And then lastly, let's talk about how you're doing programming. Do you have odometry in here using odometry pods? Are you using a infrared sensor? Are you just using run to position? So what kind of automations have you done? Actually, for automations, we use just PID. Yep. And for autonomous, we do blind autonomous yep. from lock coding. Yep. And Okay. Yeah. So like most of the autonomous part is the PID and the like Helps me a lot. Like So mostly I... run to position using the encoders? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Awesome. What are you most proud of this season? Probably the PID because before we made the PID, I was checking out my cycle times. It went up to like 20 seconds, like 25 seconds. Yep. But after the PID, I average about between 6 and 12 seconds of a cycling time. Cool. So it's made us a really big advantage. Awesome. All right, well, thank you for taking your time to uh, share your robot. This is awesome.